In this part of the question, we're given that the third term in the sequence, x3 is 1, and asked to find out what the value of p is. Now, in part b, we found out that x3 was equal to 1 plus 3p plus 2p squared. So, we can use this fact to say that 1 plus 3p plus 2p squared must equal 1. So, I'll write that in that 1 plus 3p plus 2p squared equals the 1. Now if I subtract 1 from both sides we have 3p plus 2p squared equals 0. And if I factorise this we can pull out p as a common factor so we have 3 plus 2p there inside equals 0. So therefore, each of the factors would equal 0, that would lead to p equaling 0, or 3 plus 2p equaling 0. But we're told in the question that p doesn't equal 0. So therefore, that rules that out. So we can say that since p does not equal 0, we therefore have this result here that therefore 3 plus 2p must be the one that's equal to 0. So if we subtract 3 from both sides we end up with 2p equaling negative 3 and if we divide both sides by 2 we end up with p equaling minus 3 over 2. So that is the value of p.